Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show. Our goal here is to help you create a better practice and a better life. And it's a brand new year. And you might be thinking, how do I make this year way better than last year? Well, there's nobody better to ask that question to than Dr. Uchi Odiatu. So I said, Uchi, come on back. Give us some new thinking for the new year. So today, he walks us through New Year an old you, but with some tweaks. And his point is, you don't have to be somebody different. Just be you and make some tweaks. It's fantastic. So please listen up. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. If you're like me, it's the beginning of the year and you're wondering, I got to do something. I got to do something different, but I got the same old me. And so I've got the world's expert in dentistry on how to help us think better about all things better life. His name is Dr. Uchi Odiatu. And he didn't like the title New Year, New You. How about the, the, the title for this podcast is New Year, Old You, but with some tweaks. Ooch, thanks for being on, brother. Again, as hey, always. Hey, totally enjoy sharing. It's it's my passion to teach and share. I get something out of every time I share with you, Kurt, because you got this abacus mind also. Um, so I get something from this at the same time that we share with all your viewers and listeners. Like this is an incredible opportunity. You know, I think this is Socrates might have talked to four thousand people in his lifetime. You blew you blew you blew past about the second year of in your consulting. So it's uh, this is a blessing. To have 2024 as on my calendar. Yeah. Now, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, you'll see Uchi looks like he's in the jungle somewhere. Like he's he's gonna slay a you know a a tiger or something here pretty soon. So uh, you're actually in Playa del Carmen enjoying yourself. I just love it how you're just you're in, you're you're on the scene doing it. Um, but let's talk about the title. Like, I want you to explain, because I think everybody's kind of in this new place every year. We, we've programmed ourselves at the beginning of January to rethink things. So tell, tell us the why behind the title you picked today. Well, I think New Year, New Year is kind of a tired title. I think it's, it's fairly common and it's nice, but I think it's also very much elementary. It's, it's beginner, which is fine if that's where you are. But ultimately, we, we, are, we are with ourselves and we drag it into the new year. So I think in tweaking it, means adjusting one new thing. I remember there's a PhD, a psychologist named John Ezel, and he said, human beings are very poor parallel processors. We can only focus on one thing at a time. So oftentimes people have four things they want to do this year. I want to be more kind to my team. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to do CrossFit. I'd like to learn yoga. I'm going to become certified in oral systemic health. Oh, really? So by seventh, you're like falling off the wagon, angry at yourself. So why not focus on one thing? Realizing that falling off the wagon is completely normal and enjoy the journey. We're a, we're a constantly progressing, ever evolving entity. You know, it says every 90 days, every one of our muscles gets replaced. Every two years, every skeletal cell gets replaced. Every five days, you get a new stomach lining. Every 10 days, you get new taste buds. So we're never the same person. But me in 2022 is completely different physically than what I am today. So in that whole element of continuous progress, en enjoying being on purpose, I think is the way to go. Yeah. And and you're not a big fan of the day countdown thing. Well, three more days to go, four more days. Tell us why. Well, I think when you're on vacation, uh, you see the pain. Oh, it's, you, you get there, you have a seven-day trip. Oh, six more days or two more sleeps or we go home tomorrow. Well, it's like students in the summertime. When you start counting down the weeks before school starts, you can't even enjoy the last week or two because you're thinking school starts in one week or school starts in three days. So forget that. You know, Einstein, which every dentist celebrates their geniosity, right? That's a new word. You know, Einstein said there's no such thing as time. It's an illusion. You know, if you're spending time with a very attractive person, time flies. If you put your hand on a hot stove, every second feels like millennium. So if there's no such thing as time, and it's by interpretation, 
do not talk. Don't be so time bound. Of course, if you're on systems like you teach with consulting and productivity, you got to, you know, don't get don't, don't keep patients waiting. However, ultimately in life, uh, being time bound creates a sense of always running out of time. You know, it's 11 o'clock. It's 1130. And I have this one friend of mine. I've got a few people now that say, oh, there's never enough hours in the day, never enough hours in the day. And guess what? They've actually shown physiologically their blood pressure is higher and their pulse is higher. Because they're always worrying about the time thing. Obama had 24 hours. Trump has 24 hours. Biden has 24 hours. Jack LaLanne had 24 hours. Um, you name it, we all have 24 hours. Ariana Grande has got 24 hours. So to talk about not enough time, who, who are you? Like t- this self-absorbed dentist or hygienist or whatever, to talk about not enough time. There's enough time for anything you find important. You say it's important, you'll make time for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I I don't think, you know, the wellness topic is any less important or any less or more tiring. I think it's actually a more relevant topic. As evidence, there are a lot of people that want you to speak at their events. They've realized that we're a tired society. What's your message Mm -hmm. this year? So, you know, your first lecture that you come out of the gate, what, you know, when I'm looking at the new year old me, how, how do I, how do I take these incremental steps that you're talking about one new thing? Well, if you look at realistically, if you look at how much the average dentist, and if this is for dentists or hygienist assistants too, obviously they can, obviously everyone's watching this, but if you look at how much me you invested in your office on new equipment, digital panel lips, 95,000, uh, another iTero scanner, 30,000, wherever you paid electric handpiece, uh, how much you invest in team training, how much you invest in maybe painting your house? How much you invested in your car? How much you invested in equipment? And then look at that as look at the percentage you invested in your body and see what percentage you spent on your body. Like you can only interact with this world, but we're still physical beings. How much did you realistically spend in your body last year? So if you don't have a trainer, zero. If you bought conventional food and didn't do organic, zero. If you uh, didn't look at hormone free or grass fed meat, zero. If you didn't do a gym membership, zero. If you didn't do a yoga class or thought, ah, I'm not going to get the unlimited yoga for 1200 I'm going to do 10 day passes. It's surprising how many health professionals spend very much close to zero on their physical entity. You know, So that's, that's an eye opener. Look at all the money you invested in your team, your equipment, your training, Coys, Panky, Dawson, LVI, whatever it is. And how much did you spend in your body? And most dentists will be shocked how little they spent. And if you don't spend little, guess what? You're not getting back nothing. Um, Sciatica hasn't gone away. Reflux is still there. Blood pressure that's unrelenting. So that that investment, that financial investment in your body has to be there. It doesn't happen by happenstance. Yeah, absolutely. And as we instrument change, I want to ask you about this. You know, part of it is you might have a new you or a new habit or a yoga class, but environmentally, the environment around you doesn't change. You know, Brian DeRoche, who I've had on before, he said, the problem with alcoholics sometimes is they actually get clean, but they go back to a drunk environment, which makes it 10 times harder to stick to those disciplines. Now we're talking about health here. How important is it environmentally as we start? I mean, because a lot of the forces around us, and I'm speaking for myself too, I live in a, I live in a state where, you know, Booze is everywhere, like at every party. Food, you know, organic food is not the offering here. I mean, it's all butter, mm-hmm. cheese, and heavy meats okay. and barbecue and everything. So walk us through that piece. Yeah, environment definitely has a chance to play. I think um, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at it. Michelangelo, who carved uh, David out of a huge block of stone, said in his mind he saw David. So in the dentist's mind, they have to see her vision of how she wants to look and feel. And then you got to cut away or chip away anything that doesn't serve that purpose. So that half bottle of wine at night doesn't serve that purpose. Hanging out with your friends from high school who still like to do binge drinking on, uh, at, at that small island, guess what? You got to carve away that. And then you'll get to that idealized version of your David if you cut away anything that doesn't serve you. And it doesn't have to be all or nothing either. It could literally be if it doesn't serve you, if it sabotages your um, end goal, cut it away, let it go. And I think you do have to let go of some things and maybe let go of some people. I don't know if, if, if they're uh, a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law, you can still talk to them, do the FaceTime, but you don't have to spend a full day justifying why you're becoming a certified yoga teacher or justifying why um, you have a private chef now in your home that prepares 
all the meals for your family. And that's what you're going to invest. You're going to invest 40,000 in prepared meals for your family for the next 12 months. Or I'm, I'm getting a certified trainer. I'm going to spend $2,000 a month on a trainer. It, it, fit people don't justify that to each other. But the unfit will always ask, ah, do you think it's worth it? No, I, 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 that's not how it used to be. Fit people don't go into those things. You just go, hey, good for you, buddy. I mean, move on to the next thing. So hanging around fit people who are aligned with your new David or Davidette uh, will definitely uh, enhance you getting that vision. And this all has, has to be a vision. It has to be in your mind's eye. Like I know when I was growing up at 17, 18, 19, I was into bodybuilding and weight training. And I had this vision that I can't always be this 220 pound Hulk walking around with my tight scrubs on in dental school. I thought I have this image of being a small down version, the Nucci light. And I said, I imagine myself about 180. I said these words, 180 uh, at 40 plus. And I see that no longer everyone seeing biceps. Of, I know they see my biceps, but no longer see me as bodybuilder when I walk around the corner. And now I'm living into that vision. I had this vision of being this downsized version. I didn't need to be this incredible Hulk squatting four plates. I don't, I hardly do squats at all now. It's good basic movements, but I, I've stepped into that vision, which Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's got a new book on seven habits, I think it is. Arnold Schwarzenegger's new book, I listened to it a few weeks ago. I, I, really, gee, he's had some amazing successes and some failures. And he, for six hours, for $23, um, I was able to download them. And he talked about living into your vision, having a strong vision in your mind, and living into that vision most of the time. Not all the time, most of the time. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, another thing you're a big fan of, we were talking about this before we hit the go button, is just always keeping stuff in front of you, something exciting to look for. How important is that for our mindset, our mental health? Talk about that. Yeah, I think so many of us put all our eggs in one basket. You know, I got this new Itero, it's got to happen. Or I, I just learned this new technique, it has to happen. It's nice to have something now, but the brain loves to have something on the back burner, likes to have something coming up. So I might be on a cool trip now, but I'm also doing a talk in a month in another really cool Caribbean vacation spot. So that's in the back of my mind. So I'm not counting down the days, but I would count down the days though, if I hadn't been on vacation in 15 years, because I have 17 offices and I'm micromanaging, so I haven't hired Kurt as a consultant, right? <laughs> so I would be, I would be, oh. but if I have my systems in place, you know, with Act Dental, I would be thinking, hey, I got something else down the hop, having a great time tonight. There's another program coming down the road. I got another conference, another great spot coming down the road. I can relax. Tonight does not have to be the best night of my life. It's funny. Whenever I'm out for dinner with people, and it's nice to pick healthy foods, but people act like it's going to be the last meal they ever eat. Excuse me. Um, when you prepare the rice, does, does the chef use his left hand? And will he have a glove on it? And the butter, <laughs> is that going to be grass-fed or chilled? And the, the extra virgin olive oil. When you drizzle the fire on the flambe, could you make sure you do it in a counterclockwise direction? One more thing too with the wine is the wine. Oh my God. Talk about make it like maybe your last meal on the planet. You're on death's row. And they said, this is your last meal. Be to totally analyze it, but it's just another meal. I'm going to eat again. Put some potatoes on the plate, put some meat on that plate, put some vegetables on the side. And I like to keep things simple. And that's how I can stay smiling, staying the same weight that I was in grade 11 for crying out loud without feeling confined or, uh, or corralled by choices. And I think having that mindset is one of the easiest ways to live healthy without constantly counting calories and carbs and macros. I don't have 17 apps to get healthy. An app might help you, but I think the mindset, and as you said, getting around people that support you and having good systems in place um, is the way to go. Right. And so, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but just picking up one good habit at a time. I mean, I have apples in the house all the time because of what you shared with me. I knew now do the kombucha tea, you know, or the miso soup. Oh, and I hear your voice every single time. It's all about gut health and that visceral fat uh, type of thing. But picking up one good habit that you could embrace and layer on top of it, probably a good way to go, don't you think? Yeah, I love it. And as I said, you know, John Mesa said, we're poor parallel processes, one thing at a time. But again, instead of waiting for the results, celebrate that decision to do it. Like, a lot of people don't get dopamine spike or enjoy working out. I enjoy thinking about the gym. I enjoy putting the sneakers on. I enjoy walking towards the gym. You'd be surprised how many times you can actually celebrate going and being there and the afterglow. You can literally have a hundred associations with the gym if you don't associate one. Most people associate one, getting rid of my flat butt or getting a, I want a flat stomach. But 
get more associations with making it happen. And now you can, you can have a hundred ways to enjoy it other than the results or looking at the scale. You know, I want to lose 10 pounds. A lot of people lose weight. And if you don't do weights, they actually lose the lean body mass, which never comes back. Literally, after 30, every dentist and hygienist assistant and office manager out there, if you lose weight without strength training, you're literally losing lean body mass, which means by the time you're 40 and falling off the wagon again, you might weigh the same, but now you've fat has taken up more of it than muscle. And that's why it's that slow progression of that little old man, little lady syndrome where you get weaker and weaker. Like, it's funny, I'm the same weight I was in college. Well, you've lost muscle 1% every year. At age 70, that's 40%. Right when most dentists are retiring and want to enjoy their dream home and their lake home and their cottage home, too, too weak to take care of it. You know, they, they downsize out of the two bedroom, two story dream home. And now they slide into a one story, you know, one more slide right into the coffin. I say, you know, like you got to build some inconvenience into your life. I know I, I got a little morbid and I like to get a little graphic to get people some visuals, but sliding right into that six foot under happens if you make your life too convenient. So yeah. having some inconvenience is, is a great way to get in shape. Yeah. So before we get into the slide, um, talk about this too. <laughs> you know, if you're a 50 year old dentist, listen to this, how important is it in nutritionally and health wise? I mean, dentistry is a sport. It's not a science. I mean, it is yep. a sport. It is a full on yep. physical, emotional, spiritual sport, especially if you're a good dentist, because a crown is not just a crown. Yep. If you're not taking care of the support system, talk about the link between the body and the brain, because you were thinking you were going to retire at 65. Now you're thinking 58 sounds better than 65, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, look at, I, look at, I look at role models. They said uh, Deepak Chopra, author of 90 books, psychoneuroimmunologist Deepak Chopra, said, whatever you admire, whatever you see as a role model, you can't help but move in that direction. And I remember uh, I've, I, I, anytime I admire someone, like I admire you for many ways. So I see myself inside you. And if I look at Gordon Christensen, late 80s, PhD, still on the road, still working it, still loving it, never apologizes, ironed shirt and tie, crisp. You'll never see him in a wrinkled linen shirt lecturing, fitted clothes. He has a Dodge Stealth road racing. I, he wants to pick me up at the airport. And when he hit gas, I almost <laughs> cranked back my sternocleidomastoid. His handshake is like Arnold Schwarzenegger, never complains, never explains. That's true leadership. You know, truly superheroes don't complain about the cape and the response. You never hear Superman complaining about, ah, it's been tough being a superhero. This, these, this, these tights are tight on my butt and I, this cape gets heavy. True superheroes don't complain, criticize or blame. It's up to me. And I look at Christensen and I hear, I see that guy he never talks about being tired or if you have a, well, well, you know, an afternoon program at his conference, uh, you know, paradigm shifts in dentistry. You never hear him say, if, if you work through the break, I'll have you out of here early. Hey, if you guys have the stamina and have a second cup of coffee, we'll be here till 6 p.m. because he's passionate. So there's something about taking care of your physical body that allows your brain to work better. I, I bet Christensen has a workout regimen. I bet you he's got a physical fitness regimen. There's no way that someone who's that bright and sharp in the 80s, and the science says, if you're physically fit, the brain gets more oxygen, oxygen-rated blood. If you're physically fit, you have more of this neurotransmitter called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which allows better communication between all 85 billion neurons. The 100,000 synapses are at the end of every axon, communicate better with each other. So you have more neuroplasticity when you're healthy. So it becomes a no-brainer, really. And I, I, no pun intended. If, if you're not exercising, your brain is at the slow downhill slide into that reflux, chronic inflammatory condition. So what's good for the body is good for the brain. Do not think the body work is just good for the high school reunion or the college reunion or because you're on your you know, fifth marriage. <laughs> no, that, that workout keeps that brain going so you can enjoy you know, yourself right to the end. So your health span equals your lifespan. Most people think lifespan. Health span is how long are you free of disease and disability? So basically, you know, at the end of your life, you want to have, you, you catch something, like a diagnosis or something, and you're gone in 48 hours, just enough to text a few people and uh, send some, you know, gifts to uh, some of your good friends. Okay. You got to go back to that because bam, you're hitting the nerve here. So you mentioned this book and so did Steve Carsonson. I'm now listening to Peter Atia Outlive and he okay. describes that concept, lifespan and health span. Go back to that. You need to define that for people that are listening. That's huge. Well, 
Well, every time I go into an audience, I'll say, um, who here wants to live till 100? Two people put up their hand in an in a audience of 800 people. And I say, okay, let me qualify that. Who wants to live till 100 with a good brain, good hips, good heart, good mind, and good joints? All of a sudden now, 50% of people now put up their hand. People always assume the last 10 to 20 years is decrepit and disability. And it is for anyone who's not taking care of themselves. So you want your health span to be as big as your lifespan. We've got to leave the planet some way. But in order to make your health span as big as your lifespan, this is where physical activity has to come in. And it's so badly done. I think they've shown that 80% of North Americans, 80% have no physical activity in their lives at all. And the other 20%, it's not even a complete program. They're doing yoga, maybe. They're running, maybe. No one's doing all three components, strength, cardio, and flexibility. Only 3% of the population does all three. If you're not doing three, you will suffer from lack of range of motion. If you're just running, you will have core problems. If you're just doing weights, you will maybe fall over because you don't have good you know, balance or stability on those joints. So doing all three puts those dentists, I, I want to appeal to their egos, into the top 3%. Your top 3% dentist want to put yourself in the top three. I challenge you in 2024 to be the top 3% in physical fitness. Why not? You know, right. doing 10, 10 pull-ups or chin-ups as a dentist, male or female, puts you ahead of 95% of most teenagers. I remember we had a, we had a 19-year-old uh, student come into our office to shadow me for a couple of days. And I said, do you want to jump up on the chin-up bar? And he goes, does every dental office have a chin-up bar? I said, well, in mine they do. You know, so he jumped up on the chin-up bar, this 19-year-old guy. He did seven, which is pretty good, actually, because to get into the U.S. Marines, you got to do at least three. A, a dentist walked by, again, fit, right? Fit people hang out together, probably in his middle 50s. I said, I said uh, Jay, do some chin-ups. Just pops up 10 in his scrubs, 10. And he looks at me nervously, he goes, uh, Dr. Oliatu, how many can you do? I jumped up and did 15. And he goes, that's crazy. He goes, my dad's 47. I, I could not see him doing more than 10. And here you do 10, you do 15. He goes, what gives? I said, you got to work on your body as much as you do on your skills. You got to work on your body to take care of your mind. If you want to be a good dentist, it's not just about learning the clinical skills and putting in implants and doing, you know, bone grafting and sinus lifts. You got to take care of the body. And he goes, never heard that before. He said, I haven't heard that yet in my pre-med classes, my pre-dent classes. So here I stand. I don't think alone. There's a lot of people like me. I just, I have a, I guess, an audience. I have a platform. But I really want people to see that um, taking care of your body and investing it as heavily as you do your office, it can become your best friend again. And when it becomes your best friend, it becomes predictable, solid, uh, fun, engaging, fulfilling, not guaranteeing. Like Jim Fix, the guy who made jogging popular, died at 52. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, I've heard the guy who invented jogging died at 52. Well, he had a genetic predisposition to cardiovascular disease, which if he had had an angiogram or some better testing, they could have caught the blockages early, but he didn't. So there's no guarantee I won't leave the planet early. However, I'm stacking that damn deck in favor of my health span equaling my lifespan. Stacking the deck in favor. No guarantees in this life, but stacking the deck in favor of my health span equaling my lifespan. And that's where I'm creating a unique place. Role modeling for my kids, uh, letting the team know I can miss workouts and still be fit, and that uh, your figs fit a lot better if you had a flat stomach. You know, figs right. look, make you look great, but those fig scrubs will fit a lot better if you got a flat belly. And it's not as a flat belly for aesthetics. It's just the fact that um, the flat belly means you don't have adipose tissue and the toxins from it um, draining into the portal vein, which goes through your liver. You know, right. all those, all that visceral fat, all the, 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 the inflammatory cytokines, so adipokines that come out of fat, drip directly into your inflammation. And so 77% of North Americans have a background level of higher inflammation because they are overweight. Obese is 42%. Like this is, uh, this is where it no longer becomes a should. It has to be a must in 2024. Forget the aesthetics. We're talking brain health, getting your lifespan, equaling your, getting your health span, equaling your lifespan. Yeah, I absolutely love what you're saying. And I'm picking up what you're putting down on that. Now, current events, you know, we live in a world where social media constantly influences us. And we think that is legitimate news. It's January, 2024. I'm going to pull you into some conversations. You and I didn't have a chance to talk about it. So okay. I'm going to kind of put you okay. on the spot. Okay. So I probably hosted or was part of like five to six holiday parties. We're a big one. Everyone's drinking and eating. Yeah. I probably heard none less, probably 10, 11, 12 times people talking about 
you know, Oprah now supports a weight loss drug and there's some drugs that you can get from your doctor yep. to lose weight. And like, yeah. that is a big conversation right now. Like, yep. it, well, Oprah said it was okay. I want you to yep. speak to, you know, the advancements in drugs mm. and what that'll do. I mean, if we're on this planet for another 30 years, you're going to hear stuff like this all the time. For sure. Well, the people were waiting for the advancement. They were waiting for the prescription medication to catch up and they weren't. They thought leptin was the answer in 1994. Then they realized it was overrated. It didn't happen. Well, they've now found prescription drugs that you can buy that makes you less likely to enjoy eating. So people are losing weight. So right now, a lot of people who've never lost weight before have lost weight. And no one ever brags about what they're on. Everyone's saying, oh, I, I cut down. No, they're taking a prescription drug, most likely. If, they have, if they've gone on yo-yo diets, they've never kept it off. Now they kept it off. The challenge though, by doing it this way though, is you don't get the benefit of losing the weight with exercise and nutrition. What happens, it's like winning the lottery. Sure, you, 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 have, you have 500 million, but you didn't earn it. And if you didn't earn it, that's why people within 24 months lose it. So if you get fit and you look great by something that got you there in 90 days, 120 days, you got none of the benefits from going there. None of the dopamine, none of the, the neurotransmitter balancing, none of the discipline. Uh, Andrew Huberman, neuroscientist out of California, says as a part of your cortex, it's called the um, anterior mid-cingulate cortex, the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. And it gets bigger in people who do hard things. It gets bigger in people who have discipline. It gets bigger for people who work through lunch or that emergency. It gets bigger with, with dentists who, do, who take difficult CE courses. It gets bigger in people who do tough things. So if you take a drug and lose weight, that anterior cortex stays tiny because your mind didn't get bigger to take care of that new weight so that you don't get any of the benefits, except on paper, it looks like, oh, I lost 30 pounds. But you, you didn't get any benefits. There's no increase in BDNF. There's no increase in muscle mass. If anything, they've actually shown you lose lean body mass with that drug. You lose lean body mass. People talk about the side, every drug has side effects. Anytime you do something exogenously, there's, there's going to be some kickback. The challenge is, though, it's, it's a perfect economic drug because guess how long people have to stay on it for? How long? Forever. It's perfect. That's why there's no new antibiotics. You know, there's no new antibiotics because people are only on them for five days, seven days, 10 days. The same 50 antibiotics have been around for years. But drugs that you're on forever, it's a booming industry. You know, it's a booming industry. And God bless them. What a great idea. However, I know some people are desperate, though. I see the desperation. Um, I think, you know, people talk about not necessarily disability, but people, there's a lot of fat shaming, you know, 42% obese. People have this stupid idea that if someone's overweight, they're lazy. And they're not lazy. There's some really, it's, it's, it's just it, it's just as much discipline in an overweight person, obese person as someone who's lean. But society has this belief that someone who's overweight or obese is lazy. And um, you read this. So you're trying to share. So there's a big pressure for someone to take this shortcut. And it's a shortcut for sure. But at least if you lose the weight, though, your joints will be happier. You'll have less body fat. But you're not going to get any of the benefits of the journey there. It's like someone saying, it's like someone who's an associate and someone gives her 20 offices. Hey, here's 20 offices. Uh, you think, wow, I own 20 offices. You don't know how to run them. You don't know what to do with them. You, you got no, you don't know system to get there. It was given to you. It's like anything is given that you didn't earn it. And so there's no skin in the game. Um, but I see people are desperate, though, so I can see why it's attractive. So you're pretty astute listening to those conversations. But uh, interesting. We'll see where it goes. I, I see a lot of lean people who weren't lean before. I'm not going to accuse them. I'm just going to say good for you. What What next? You know? Yeah. But I think it's great perspective how you put on that. That's absolutely true. You know, you have a great way of telling the truth about what what it is that we see in regards to a lot of things mm -hmm. in dentistry and health, I just really appreciate you. And I know we can't keep you all day long, buddy. I have like 30 more questions for you, but I want you to wrap this up in a bow. You know, give us some final thoughts on new year, old you with some tweaks. Yeah, I th let me do it. And very spontaneously, what are three things that I would do if someone doesn't have any fitness habits, has never invested in their health before? Their office is amazing. Their team is amazing. And they got the best looking team. They got all these systems in place, but have never invested in their body. I'd say one, I, you need to develop a vision of your thinking it's possible for you. You got to, those words, I, I did an Instagram post the other day. And anytime we say the words, I am, it's very powerful. What are you saying after? So I am 
that must only contain positive things. I, I hear people all the time saying, I'm so stupid, or my memory's going, or I'm such a ditz, or I'm so bad with endo, or I am, and I am is so powerful. I challenge anyone to, to, for the next seven days anyway, catch yourself when you say the words I am. You can say, I feel tired, not I am tired. Or I feel old, not I am old. And here, how many times in a day you hear conversations where people actually will say the words I am and put the sums down. It's rarely you get a chance to hang around Donald Trump where he says, I am the smartest person in the room. I am the sexiest man I know. Few people will, will trump up their I ams. Right. But most of us are so humble. I am tired. I'm bad with numbers. I'm so bad with my team. So I chat as one. So anytime you use the word I am, try and follow it with something positive or optimistic. Two, look at what you're investing in your body. So invest in some better quality food. Invest in, bet. don't buy the cheapest sneakers at the gym. Uh, go to a better quality gym. Uh, invest in the unlimited yoga, hot yoga at the studio by, close by. Three, invest in the best gear. I know dentists like to spend money, so <laughs> invest in the best gear. You know, buy a nice home gym equipment so it, it looks good. You know, I know you can't ignore the aesthetics. And ultimately, I'd say I just had a fourth one. Get fit people in your life. Hang around other fit people because we, we have different conversations. We're not going to bring attention to, oh, you're only going to have one glass of wine. We, we support you. We will not bring attention to the old you. We're not going to remind you how you used to be. So there you have it. Mindset, gear, uh, look at the percentage you spend in, in equipment and get around fit people. And then you and I will have a different conversation, hopefully, uh, January 2025. Yeah. So well said, Uch. Gosh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being on. And I want you guys that are listening to this to follow Ooch. Ooch, tell us where we can find you. I mean, I'm just saying this. I follow you on all social. It's inspiring. I love, like, you're just bringing good stuff. So in a world where, I mean, I don't spend a ton of time on social, but when I'm going through my feed and I find an Ooch post, I'm like, ah, oh, it just makes me feel better. So Ooch, if I'm listening, where do I find more? Hey, well, well one quick thing, and I'm not sure when you're going to post this, whether you can sneak it in earlier. Uh, Dr. Bicuspid just informed me yesterday that I'm top three, and I'm not sure why your name's on that list. Who knows that you, you, you didn't nominate yourself. You're so humble. But I'm one of the top three people nominated for Dental Educator of the Year. So Dental Educator of the Year. So Dr. Bicuspid. Um, but you know what, though? The, the voting ends January 19. So if this is played after, no one's going to know of these viewers. But if you can sneak this in... <laughs> If you can sneak this in, Kurt, I, I beg you, on the 16th or 17th or 18th, and people can vote for me, it's go to drbicuspid.com. They can vote for their as dental educator, there's team, there's even consultant, I think. There's a few things, writer. And um, that would be something that's that's immediately on my mind. Like, I'd love to get that accolade. It's been, it's been you know, 15, 20 years of me doing this. And it's only now that I seem to be receiving some industry pat on the backs, but... You know, there's a part of me that enjoys it. So I'd love to, uh, I'd love to be honored with that educator of the year. Well, Ooch, let's see what we can do. I'm not making any, I'm the worst technical person <laughs> ever, but let me see what I can do by talking to our post-production team and see if we can't get hey, you Aston, on that I know, list. I've met, well deserved. I, I, I've met Aston in Milwaukee. He's a sharp dude. You know, uh, you might be Sherlock Holmes. He is your Watson and, uh, he is, <laughs> he is your crick to your, uh, crick to your Watson. Okay. And, uh, but I'd say, you know, if there's a possibility, if possibility, because I think the voting ends, uh, on the 19th. So anyway, something to ponder. Well, let's see what we can do and in any fashion, <laughs> you know, whoever gets this, please do that because it's well-deserved. Ooch, you're just an amazing blessing to this great profession, this podcast and all the people listening. I'm just so grateful for you. And I'm gonna have you back again and again and again. So you can add some great perspective, some better thinking. And for those of you guys that are listening, please do this. Let's take the old you, make it a little bit better with a few tweaks this year by following Uchi's tips. So Uchi, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show. Hey, number one, follow Uchi. Number two, if you enjoyed this, share this with your friends. I love how the podcast's growing. Don't know how it's working, but just keep doing that. And number three, until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.